Hey, McGarren Flack here, just updating you about some information on planting persimmons. I ordered multiple persimmons from Tai Tai Nursery last year. The downside is by the time they shipped them out to me, it was, I think, June or July, which here in St. George, Utah, which is pretty close to Mesquite, Nevada or Las Vegas. It's a little bit cooler than Las Vegas, but I got it in the heat of summer. And if you want to watch those videos, I have those on YouTube about how they ended up dying. It was very sad. So Tai Tai Nursery gave me credit so that I could order more persimmons. And this time I was able to get four instead of the six that I initially purchased. I think it was six, maybe it was five, either way. So I was able to order four. So I ordered things from four replacements from Tai Tai Nursery and I'll go over those persimmons with you. I also changed a few things because the persimmons died. I know I planted it in the middle of the summer, but I also used compost and mixed it in with the soil as recommended by some nurseries. I've been following Gary from Laguna Hills Nursery and he has talked about how it's really good to plant all of your stuff in a sandy soil so that you can water more often, uh, roots won't rot out, and I guess persimmons are relatively prone to doing that. So I'm gonna unbox these four persimmons from Tai Tai Nursery and let's take a look and see how they are, if they're any good, if they're too short, what needs to happen. And then I'm gonna soak them in water and then plant them. So stay tuned so you can watch all of this stuff happen. And I'm gonna give you a little bit of an update on a couple of other things about persimmons while going through the process. So here's the box that it came in. Nice and easy. Open this thing up. All right, this is what the inside looks like. It's sectioned off, which is nice for stability inside the boxes here at the top and also at the bottom. Hopefully you can see that. Unlike, so unlike the last shipment that I received, these are bare root. If you look at the bottom here, all four of these trees, you can count them one, two, three, four. All four of these trees are combined into one with this plastic wrap around them. So let's see which ones I've got here. I have a Matsumoto, a Hana Fuyu, a chocolate persimmon, which I'm really excited about, and a giant Fuyu. So the only one that I think is astringent is the chocolate. And I have a very specific place that I'm going to plant these. I am mixing some astringent persimmons with some non-astringent persimmons. And the reason for that is because birds do not like eating the astringent persimmons. They're really batter, bitter. Nobody likes eating astringent persimmons. So if you have tried a persimmon and you don't like it, it's probably because it sucked all the moisture out of your mouth and that just sucks, literally. So um, I'm going to plant those astringent with the non-astringent. So if a bird comes in and tries to eat some of the fruit, it will think otherwise. Hopefully it'll hit the astringent one because they look better than the non-astringent. At least I think they look better. I don't know, I mean, that's debatable. Who knows what they like. So I'm gonna take these things out, soak them in some water for about 30 minutes while I start to pull out the soil in the ground. And I will show you the consistency of the soil that I'm about to plant them in. And we'll go from there.
Okay, I got the holes dug. I found out where my watering line is. It is right there along the edge, right there. And this one, that one, and that one, I'm putting all three of them in the same, basically the same hole. But they are separated about 18 to 24 inches. And I'm going to be planting the Matsumoto right there facing south. It is the most south facing. The giant will go in this one and then the Hannah will go in this one. So Matsumoto, giant, and Hannah. That way north is going this direction. It's pretty late in the afternoon and I want to do that so that this tree doesn't stop these other two trees from getting a good amount of sun which I don't have to worry about in the desert so much, but I'm just doing that to try it out. Maybe I should have it set up so it's shading, but that's what I've learned, so I'm gonna try it this way. Again, the soil is mostly sandy loam. It has some of the native soil in it, mostly sand, and then it has some perlite in there to help with drainage. Because I've heard that with persimmons, they tend to get waterlogged, they'll die. There's a 50% chance that they'll die anyways. Um, so I know that there's a total risk and I'm okay with that. I've spent a couple hundred dollars on persimmon trees. And you might ask, well, why the crap are you doing that, McGarren? And I, to tell you the truth, I love persimmons. And I have seven different varieties now in the orchard. And I want to try each variety and see how they taste different or if they do taste different uh, because we don't have access to them here in St. George very much. At the grocery store you can get it in October but they're ultra expensive. So I'm going to try growing these in sandy soil. It didn't work out for the last ones again probably because of the heat but also maybe because of the soil and it wasn't very good draining soil. So after I get these all planted in the plots, I'm going to pour in some fish emulsion. I'm, I have the holes dug, going to pour in a little bit of the fish emulsion. It's very diluted. It, that will drain down towards the bottom, so hopefully it will help with root development. That's the theory. Root development to go down, and I'm going to do that with all four of them, and then start to plant the trees. So that kind of gives you a little summary of what's going on. Also, in terms of the graft, you want to have the graft pointing um, the cut part of just above the graft should be pointing north. So if you have any south winds, which I do, the south winds will come up and push the graft against the tree as opposed to removing it away from the trunk. So that again is the theory. Also the possibility of getting it burnt and I'm not going to trim these down to size because I want the persimmons to grow, period. <laughs> so I'm, I'm afraid if I lop them down by uh, 12 inches or something that I might be losing a lot of possible growth and I want to try to maximize the usability of these persimmons because they are pretty expensive. So I will plant them now and we'll see where it goes.
For reference reasons, um, the temperature was currently 72 degrees. It's going to be 74 degrees. It is almost the middle of March, basically March 14th. And um, I soaked the persimmons so that water will go all the way down, hopefully to provide root growth. Another important thing that I want to talk about with persimmons is the roots tend to be very black. So they look like they're dead, but they're not dead. If you did a scratch test on this thing, it would totally be alive. One thing that I've noticed with persimmons is when they uh, wrinkle up on the bark, that is a good sign that your persimmon is dead. I have found living um, tissue. Is tissue the right word? I have found living parts of persimmons down at the base, even though it is wrinkled up towards the top. But ultimately, I've never seen a persimmon survive it if it's still alive towards the base. But I have had good shoots grow. And my understanding with these persimmons is that they are placed on American persimmon stock, root stock. And that is a good thing to know because if you want to grow American persimmons, you can just let one of those shoots grow up. I'm letting the American persimmon root stock grow so that I can do my own graft of a specific persimmon. I don't know which one, I'm gonna figure out which one I like the most. And because the roots are still alive and they're growing really well, for some reason the grafts on persimmons don't like to take. So I have counted, I have three here, these two here, and three more back here, and I have two more up onto the hillside. So that's, that's a good amount. Three, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, that's 10 persimmons. Okay, some of them are very rare, and I'm gonna do videos, if they live, on the rarity of the fruit and what to expect and how they look. So this is going to be a couple year project. Um, after I have them all planted here, this is called high density planting, where you plant them 18 to 36 inches apart, so you can stack more fruit into your orchard. I currently have 28 fruit trees in this uh, 50 by 100 foot plot, maybe, maybe a little bit longer, 50 by 120 feet, somewhere around there. And um, some of them are growing really good. I've had some for five years and they are still, the trunks are about this big. So they're not getting too big because I'm trying to encourage fruit growth as opposed to growth of the tree. Because I don't want these trees to get very big. I'm gonna maintain them at about nine feet, maybe even eight feet so that I can get some good fruit production. Now that the water has seeped into this and I have um, a nice little surrounding area. The other tip that I found out about persimmons is to put soil, the soil level, up to the graft. Because the graft is so shoddy, you need to protect it so that it doesn't um, die. But I don't know if that's true or not. I'm trying it with all of my persimmons. Oh no, I have 11 persimmons. I have a cardinal that's over there. Yes, I forgot about that. So. All of these persimmons, I'm going to take them and put this stuff. I did not put this mulch in the soil because I didn't want to rot out the roots. Even though it's a good draining soil, um, I still don't. I, I'm just trying all this stuff out to make it work here. I know it can work. I've had friends that have had persimmons here in St. George and it has worked for them. So it's gotta work for me, right? even though soil could be totally different from my neighbor versus what I'm working on. But I'm getting the hang of this. Uh, pH is pretty good. The pH of this soil is 7.5. I'm gonna see if I can uh, push it down to a seven using some sulfur to push it down, but we'll see how that works and maybe I'll make another video for that. So I hope that you learned some good things about this. Hopefully they'll take and we won't have a huge heat wave this summer and they'll all live and grow and thrive and I will get this all figured out. If not, maybe I need to go a different direction with fruit trees even though I love persimmons.
All right, please let me know if you have any questions or comments. If you think that I'm doing this totally wrong, let me know. But in the meantime, I'm just gonna put all of this soil around it so that it is protected from the elements and go from there. Thanks.